This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WVAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. Well, good morning. 2.04 the time. What a difference a day makes. The government struck a deal before they shut down. And of course, when the sun came up, I realized, I realized Washington had come to some, some agreement. This is the biggest. What's the word I'm looking for, Lee? This is the biggest I can't say that. Um, The biggest bunch of nothing, that's good, Rick, that ever came across. Do you realize that? It's the biggest bunch of nothing. I'm getting comfortable with that. Uh, That ever came across. The American people... Ought to be, ought to be just telling the folks in D.C. Look, play your little games if you want to. Pelosi stand there for eight hours, uh, like a deer tick, and um, you know, yammer on and on and on. It, it this is so revealing. We got the wrong folks, or many of them are the wrong folks to be representing us. As a matter of fact, a little something over here for you. Uh, the 10 dumbest things Nancy Pelosi has said lately. Um, in 2000, what was it, uh, three years ago? I think it was three years ago. Uh, Pelosi told Fox News, I think it was Chris Wallace, that spending, <laughs> government spending, yeah, it's not a big deal. And it's easily offset by raising taxes. Now, she said this in the daytime. In front of everybody, telling Fox News, Chris Wallace, I think, that spending in government, nah, it's not really a big deal. It can always be offset by raising taxes on you. But trying to explain herself, she said it's almost a false false argument to say we have a spending problem. Almost false? Four years later, the national debt was $20 trillion. But you can always offset. This is this goes to what Democrats think. Yeah, we can we can always offset spending by raising taxes. Good. You know she's kind of bad with uh, numbers and names. She often calls President Donald Trump President Bush. In two thousand, what was it, two thousand nine or ten? She was pushing a stimulus bill to counter the recession. She said every month. That we do not have an, I wish I could do a Nancy Pelosi voice, I can. She said every month that we do not have an economic recovery package, 500 million Americans lose their jobs. Uh, Yeah, well, the problem is the United States had over just 300 million people in it at the time. So maybe, maybe she's got 200 million dreamers out on, out in the vineyard. I don't know. Um, If there's only 300 million people, Nancy, how do you lose 500 million jobs? Well, look, it's it's Nancy. Uh, She said uh, when she was talking about Obamacare, uh, she sold Obamacare big time and did so before its full implementation in, uh, what was it, 2012. And she said, and I quote, and everybody will have lower rates. She was talking about premiums, right? She said it on NBC's Meet the Press. And everybody, you're going to love it. Everybody's going to have lower premiums. Yeah, but see, the next year, the National Republican Congressional Committee um, highlighted she defended the fallout from Obamacare at a press briefing. I don't remember saying that everybody in the country would have lower premium. (laughs) Nancy, you're on TV. See, they archive that stuff. They can go back and get it. Oh, really? Yes. So be careful what you say. Um, she compared Obamacare to the Declaration of Independence uh, a couple of years ago. She uh, she headed off to celebrate July 4th and said, I quote, 
we will also be celebrating health independence. It captures the spirit of the founders. Really? You think Jefferson was thinking, man, how do we get to universal health care? How do we do that? Uh, then, in a, she's, she's great at this. You may not like her. I don't care for her much. But she's a master at race baiting. In September 2017, she compared dreamers to Japanese-American citizens who were forced into temporary internment camps during World War II. And she said, and you got to read between the lines here, um, I, I think this statement came, I don't know, maybe a half hour before the meds kicked in. While their family members were fighting for freedom for America and for the world, they were in internment camps, and then they came for them. Now they're coming for the dreamers. Who's coming for whom, Nancy? Who? What, what are you talking about? Doesn't even make sense. Okay. Well, it shouldn't. Uh, she also loves to spend tax dollars. In uh, September of uh, two years ago, during a debate on cutting the federal government's $4 trillion budget, she said, the covered, I've gone to it, it's bare. There are no more cuts to make. So if you think you're getting taxed too high, um, Nancy's here to tell you she's been to the cupboard and it's bare. So taxes is probably going to have to go up. In April 2017, just last year, she attacked Trump for proposing a border wall on the southern border. That makes sense. I mean, she's a Democrat. She would. Even though she voted for the Border Fence Act of 2006. See, it, it, again, Nancy, we archive this stuff in case we have to go back and get it. Really? Yes. Yes, really. I mean, so all the stupid things you say, we can go back and get. Really? Yes. Yeah, it's true. You voted for the Border Fence Act of 2006, but then you attacked Trump for propo uh, proposing a border wall. She was on NBC, I think Chuck Todd, and she said, the president is expressing a sign of weakness. He's saying, I can't control our borders, so I have to build a wall. So it wasn't a sign of weakness when Pelosi voted for it in 2006? See, I I'm telling you, when you see politicians speak, and I'm talking about some of them on the right, too, when they're talking to you on television, you know, they sort of lose their brain. They become very myopic. That TV camera, you know, puts them into some kind of trance, like a dog hearing a dog whistle. They can hear it, but we can't. It's the same thing with politicians. Um, and then, of course, the infamous quote um, when she defended the way the Democrats rammed Obamacare through Congress, and even reporters were brave enough to say, Ms. Pelosi, Ms. Pelosi over here. Yeah, well, well exactly. Can you give us some information about what's going on? We've never had that before in this country. We're kind of, well, we have to pass the bill for you to find out what's in it. Next question. Well, what kind of, what kind of remark is that? And the quote that's sure to haunt Democrats in this year's midterm election is uh, Pelosi's cavalier dismissal of uh, $1,000 bonuses, $2,000 bonuses that, uh, uh, legions of American workers got as a result of Trump's tax reform. In term, she said, in terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs they are giving to workers to uh, kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. I think it's insignificant. So if you got a thousand dollar bonus or a two thousand dollar bonus or uh, your minimum wage went up by three or four bucks an hour. Uh, Pelosi thinks it's insignificant. Well, it probably is the way those politicians spend your tax dollars. I mean, that won't buy them lunch. Um, by the way, you know, it's not as though Nancy is is hurting too much. Pelosi and her husband, Paul, Paul Pelosi, um, are themselves not too bad off. They have a net worth estimated at $43 million. Did you know that? Yeah. Nancy is, no, I think those are crumbs. They're just crumbs. Well, you got a couple loaves of bread over there. Why don't you spread some of that around? Oh, no, no, no. I'd have to kill you first. Um, so they continue. And I guess they continued into the night. Rand Paul was, yeah, I, he, I think he had a leg to stand on. 
you know, and the military is going to benefit, so that's good. Um, and, of course, uh, the Democrats, what about the illegals in this country? Why are they fighting so hard? No, 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 I'm not talking about, I don't need the violins out and, you know, some uh, somebody sitting there crying or the soap opera type mentality. I don't need that. Well, it, Rick, they're just, don't you see the TV shows at night, the little boy with a bloated belly, he wants a sandwich. You know, I've always wondered about those commercials. Um, you know, they're filming these kids. They got, you know, flies buzzing around, bloated belly, uh, which is a sign that they haven't enough, had enough to eat. Somebody in that film crew that's filming, I'm hoping they gave them a sandwich before they drove off. I mean, that's just sad, you know, and we should be able to help those people. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about something totally different. Why are the Democrats willing, willing to give up citizenship uh, so easily? Why are they willing to shut the government down in D.C. on behalf of people that are here illegally? I've never understood sanctuary cities. I don't get that either. You know, I'll be honest with you. If I was living in a country like Mexico that has so many natural resources but is so corrupt, I mean, from the top to the bottom to the police force, the military, the government, it's all corrupt. They leave their people to live in abject poverty. If I had a couple of kids at home that were starving to death, man, I'd swim that river too to get over here and do something to take care of my family. Um, if those were the only people we're talking about, I don't know that I have much of a problem with that. That's almost a humanitarian cause, isn't it? But when you let drug dealers and MS-13 and, and who knows who across because you don't control a non-existent border, then I think it takes on a whole different dynamic. All right. Let me shut up for a second. 2.15 the time. Let's check that afternoon drive and right back to your calls. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. I'm just... And then, Nancy, did you see Pelosi on the floor? doing her eight-hour filibuster, I got to give her kudos. I don't know if I could stand up for eight hours. That's that's pretty good. Well, with 43 million bucks, she might have let, had a little uh, pharmaceutical help, you think? Maybe? I don't know. WB8. That would be the house working its will because we do know that the DREAM Act has support on both sides of the aisle. And we thank our Republican colleagues, those who have spoken out publicly uh, for their courage in supporting okay. this, All right, this blah, 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 blah. God. I mean, you know, she's... Uh, I don't know what to say. I almost feel sorry for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, she's got, what, almost 50 million bucks? She's got her own vineyard in California? And what she's doing is she's standing up behind a podium for eight hours. Go home. Enjoy yourself. You've earned it. I don't agree with anything you've said, but you've still earned it. Representing uh, your own side. Go home. Kick your feet up. Have a little uh, Pinot Noir. Um, maybe some cheese and grapes. Who, who knows? Uh, I'm just, just relax. And it, well, what? What are you? What are you? What are you looking at? Did you say that right? The Pinot Noir. Of, yeah, is that correct? Yeah, that's what I drink. Okay. Well, what do you call it? I call it that white kind right there. It's not white wine. Oh, I didn't know what it is. I don't drink it. Well, then why are you causing problems? <laughs> because it sounded funny. It's Pinot Noir. It's not peanut in the dark. Oh, All right. That's my wine. Yeah, it's okay. Pinot Noir. Okay, now now we're clear. Well, I was clear to begin with. All right. I wasn't. Let okay. me get to your calls before we totally drive this thing off the road. Let's go to AJ. AJ, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it very much. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much, Rick. You bet. Um, I just call to take a little issue with you here about Nancy Pelosi. Okay. I mean, uh, sounds a little class warfare that you're uh, digging at her for being a successful uh, person outside of Congress. And uh, furthermore, Nancy's no, I, uh, I was not saying, in power. Nancy's I, not in power. I was saying she that these she's... Two members to act um, okay, on I'll, I'll just be over here. What? Well, she released her members to vote as they saw fit, but she saw, she felt 
compelled to speak on behalf of the dreamers. Okay, well, let me correct you. First of all, I'm not. Cl- um, there is no class warfare. What I'm pointing out right. is that the woman is independently wealthy as her okay. husband. I'm not quite finished. And along with her husband, and they got a great vineyard out in California. Um, when she speaks here of late, it's like not all the oars are in the water, and I'm thinking, I, you know, I maybe it's time. I'm, I'm not finished yet. Maybe well, it's time for you her. You made your argument several times, Rick. Okay, you're a liberal. I can tell by the fact that you can't hold a conversation. Go ahead. Hold on. Somebody pull up the clock and give the guy three in uninterrupted minutes. That's how you deal with liberals. One, two, three, go. All I'm suggesting to you is that she spoke on behalf of the Dreamers and asked Paul Ryan to bring up the bill that the Senate would pass and give it a floor vote because Republicans would pass the bill. That's all she asked for. Yeah, and it took her eight hours. Come on, AJ, you're smarter than that. She was doing a filibuster. You know, they're worried about a bunch of illegal aliens in America I can think of a lot of reasons to shut down government, but but illegal aliens are not one of them. Hey, let me ask you this. When okay, this is called making a statement. Asking, go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't know why I'm trying. About, go ahead. What about what about if you're going to talk about shutting down the government? Uh huh. Your party, the Republican Party, has right. done it multiple times. Right. And furthermore. What about the ungracious and totally unprecedented move of never even conducting a hearing for Obama's nominee to the Supreme Court? Well, I mean, they didn't like him. It was a total. That was a total. I, I just answered you. They didn't like him. They didn't want him. Guess what? You still hold hearings. Not necessarily. No, time. you don't. You you are not required constitutionally to hold a hearing if it's already no, somebody but you don't want. Customs. We already have. Uh, a president in the in the White House right now who isn't accustomed to doing anything normally. Well, and no, he's not he used to doing anything. To pol- the Russians. Okay, can is this on? Can he hear me? Okay, I can uh, he, hear you. Okay, you just won't. I'm, I'm just tired of the AM radio crap that gets dished out every well, day. Well, it's it's only crap because people reasonable. like you call up and just talk nonstop. You won't listen to you've anything. Got, you've got thousands of hours of time every day, and you've got a state. Uh, thousands of hours. Okay, Nancy Pelosi. There are only twenty four hours in a day. All right. It uh, should I continue, or is it just kind of an effort and futility? He still has one minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me, AJ. You still, uh, you still talking, AJ? You still have a minute to go. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Well, you've taken most of the time. I object. I reclaim my time. <laughs> okay, uh, Robert's rules of order. Yeah, be my guest. All I'm suggesting to you is your Republican Party is no longer a party. It's a cult. It's an entire cult, and you follow the cult leader, uh, Donald Trump, Mm -hmm. and there's not a Republican in there with a spine except for Jeff uh, Flake out of Arizona. Well, Flake is entirely uh, that. All right, A.J., I appreciate the call more than you know. A.J. is here to say, and by the way, I hammer the Republicans, A.J., just as much as the Democrats. Well, not as much because they're not as... Not as void of common sense as most Democrats. Um, I don't want to shut the government down because of people that are in this country illegally. I don't want to shut the government down because Democrats can, can't get their uh, favorite pet projects paid for with tax dollars. Uh, I don't want to shut the government. I mean, d- let's face it, AJ, the Democrats' entire platform is what the government's going to give somebody. That's not the, what the government was set up to do. Okay. AJ, Nothing but love for you. I'm never going to get back that five five minutes, six minutes. How long did that take? Four minutes? Okay, good. AJ, I'll look forward to the next call. I truly, truly will. We are now spending more money on the military than the next 12 nations combined. And when study after study shows that there has been enormous amount of waste uh, in the Pentagon. They have not been able to do uh, an audit, the only agency of government not to do an audit. I think it is wrong to increase military spending by $165 billion over two years. Let me tell you something, folks. You can't fix stupid. 
All right, uh, 2.34 the time. Sorry. Is that a little mean-spirited? Well, so be it. Um, let me just get to your calls. All right, I've done enough damage. Let's go to Cliff in Dallas. Cliff, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Cliff? I'm doing pretty good. He doesn't want military spending, yet he's perfectly fine taxing us into Bolivian for his uh, programs like free college and uh, free health care. Yeah, right? well, do you want to defend the country or do you want to you want to send Scooter to uh, to college? I mean, let's let's get our priorities. Right, do straight. we want to be offensive or defensive? Because we are kind of overstretched in too many countries. You got to admit that. Why are we in Yemen? Why are we still in Afghanistan? We already got Bin Laden. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I, got so I want to talk about the government shutdown. What would be so bad about a government shutdown? Isn't the government too big? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, shut it down. Uh, I, uh, you know, if you go back, we started shutting the government down back uh, in 76 under Gerald Ford and then Carter, then Reagan. I think Reagan shut the government down or had the government shut down every year. Um, mm-hmm. Bill Clinton uh, a couple of times had the government shut down. George H. W. Bush, he shut it down once. Barack Obama, um, he shut it down. Uh, Clinton shut it down several times. Uh, You know, the earth didn't stop spinning on its axis. We didn't go flying off into the sun. Uh, The only thing that didn't happen was, you know, everybody's walking around going, what happened to all the money, your money, uh, that politicians usually spend? So shut it down. I don't care. And I also want to point out the hypocrisy on both sides of the Republicans and Democrats. When Obama is in office, they complain about the deficits, but then they're in power, and it seems like they're perfectly fine about it. Um, it, Trump is supposed to be not the status quo, but he's perfectly fine probably signing this increase to the debt. That's going to be a problem. There's going to be unintended consequences of this um you know spending we can't keep spending and spending forever with no consequence it seems like that that doesn't matter to these people they don't care uh you're right you're absolutely right uh for a long time republicans couldn't win anything they couldn't even muster a bake sale in the parking lot of the high school i i mean so now they've got both they've got majority in both houses the white house and a record number of governorships across the country and they're still trying to figure out what to have for lunch i mean they just i don't know what's wrong with the republicans but it's it's always they don't know how to act unless it's reactionary they don't know anything about going on the offense all right. Yeah, well, something's going to have to change. Some reform is they're going to have to give in some kind of um, military spending, and then the Democrats are going to have to do some kind of reform of what they want. It's, so there's going to have to be some kind of compromise or some kind of economic collapse is going, to ha- is going to occur, which will force them to do something about it. Well, you're right. President Trump um, today, uh, after the wee hours of the morning, signed a, uh, a new budget deal. I think it's $400 billion. That's, uh, you know, that's jacking up the spending. It swells the federal deficit. There's no doubt about that. So uh, it ended the uh, brief federal government shutdown that happened while most of you were asleep. Um, the House and Senate approved the bill uh, to keep the government funded, here we go again, through March 23rd. <laughs> okay, that's what we're looking You got any plans between now and March 23rd, Lee, except doing the show? That's it. Okay. Well, we'll find out together. Um, they overcame the opposition from uh, liberal Democrats as well. Uh, Tea Party conservatives came out to endorse enormous spending increases. Really? No. Uh, despite looming trillion-dollar deficit. Tri- think about that. Trillion-dollar deficits. The House board voted 240 to 180-something. It doesn't matter. To approve the bill just before uh, the sun came up hours after the Senate had approved the measure on another vote. Um, Trump tweeted this morning that he'd signed the bill, writing that the U.S. military will now be stronger than ever before. The budget bill, he said, also means jobs, jobs, jobs. And he followed up uh, with some additional tweets, hammering Democrats, calling for the election of more Republicans in Congress. Um, You know, I... If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig with lipstick. Um, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and go, way to go, Trump, way to go, you got it done. Uh, you know, we need to be going the other way. 
you know, our priority ought to be uh, defending the country, defending the security, sanctity, and sovereignty of the nation. Um, you know, but uh, opening uh, up the ATM every time the Democrats get their nose out of joint doesn't seem to have worked up to this point, does it? Um, the twin votes uh, put to rest, for at least briefly, uh, the federal freeze that, uh, like I said, most most of you wouldn't even notice it. Many who uh, labeled it as a pointless head scratching episode, and it was. The shutdown was the second partial government shutdown in three weeks. All right. I mean, have you are you have you filed for divorce? Did your home go into floor closure? Have you lost your job? No. The breakdown came largely in the Senate when it, what was it? Uh, Rand Paul obviously uh, went rogue and stalled a vote in protest over his party's willingness to bust the budget. But Democrats also had their, uh, you know, their reasons, and they were wrangling largely with uh, liberal mentalities, upset the measure was not tied to any plans to assist the dreamer immigrants. Everything the Democrats are doing uh, is based on the DACA and and dreamers. Uh, It's... I, I'm not sure why. Do they really think the voting block they create is going to be that big? Um, most Democrats oppose the measure um, following Nancy Pelosi. I will follow and have followed people um, a lot. Nancy Pelosi wouldn't be one of them. She tried and failed to use the moment to secure some type of promise for a separate vote on immigration. I vote. Here, let's have a vote on immigration. Okay, you can't be here unless you're a citizen. Huh? How about that? Okay, um, up to the final minute, it wasn't clear that the bill was going to pass. And a lot of Democrats held their votes, allowing the tally to creep slowly up. It's all it's all theater. That's what it is. And it's bad theater at that. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Hank. Hank, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Hank? Great, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. But, uh... To summarize Trump's presidency, I think uh, the first year was uh, uh, solidifying his commitment to making America great again and his uh, uh, staunch, fast uh, ability to combat the establishment, the media, and the deep state in getting the word out via uh, uh, social media. But right now, I think strategy of Trump is outstanding. He's shaping the battlefield to the 2016 and beyond to the 2000 election. Right, right. And I mean, and I mean from that is that uh, I understood that we got a two-year budget. I don't know last time we ever got a two-year budget, and I don't understand the you know we've got till March to to look at another budget problem for a continuing resolution but i'm i'm stupid at that uh but looking down the road i think uh you know trey gowdy we got up you know last week on uh on cbs and said hey man i'm getting out of here but i still want to stay in the business and i think the business to trey coincides with the judicial uh spearhead of the trump uh, uh, make America great again thing, and that, you know, who knows, you know, let's, and I'll make a prediction, I don't know if it's good or not, but the Ninth Circus Court will be, uh, you know, broken up a little bit. Well, it needs to be. It needs to be. Yeah. And I think maybe Trey Gowdy is a, 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 a good person, and you know, once he's out for two years, in order to come back and maybe be a, a, a district judge, or a Supreme Court judge. And I think it's super, man. The strategy that Trump, uh, uh, Trump has shown is just great. You know, he's shaping everything so fast. He's got agility down the field that nobody can keep up with him. Well, you know, I, I look at it this way. Um, is he doing and saying all the things that people expect him to do and say? No, he's not. Because he's not a politician. Um, I don't expect him to be smooth and, 
and, uh, you know, have all the right words. I mean, as much as people said, you know, I want my country back, I want my country back, uh, I'm sick of politics as usual, and then they hire uh, a billion-dollar playboy to do the job. You realize that this is the secret of Washington. The dirty little secret is the Republicans are loudly clamoring for more military spending, but they can't get it unless they give the Democrats welfare spending. So they raise all the spending. It's a compromise in the wrong direction. We should be compromising in the direction of going towards spending only what comes in. Yeah, how about that? Spending only what you have to spend. <laughs> what was it Pelosi said? Oh, no, no, no. No, the government doesn't. Ooh, uh, hello? Yeah, Nancy, we're having an interview. Oh, okay. Uh, then, uh, we don't have a government spending problem. And besides, even if we... What day is this? Oh, Nancy, we're, it's fine. We'll complete your sentence, if you would. Okay. Um, well, I said to the man with the little dog, as we, no, Nancy, we were talking about government spending. Ah, yes. Any government spending problem the government may have can be easily offset by raising taxes. <laughs> Excuse me? How about just doing what Americans do every day? Stay within your budget. Budget? Bud gig? What is that? Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Bill in Cedar Park. Bill, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great, Rick. And evidently, you're having a banner day here because you deserve an ice cream cone with sprinkles because sprinkles are for winners. <laughs> that, first, that first call that you took today, I was going to let everybody have the opportunity to call in, but that is the perfect and prime example as to why this country is heading in the direction that it's heading. With all the snowflakes and all the stupidity that goes on in this country, I just can't believe that somebody would think that what they were saying was so true and factual when they just go, as you said before, bleed with the heart and ignore the facts. And yeah. that's exactly what you were trying to, to point out to him. And he just continued to ignore it, ignore it. And, and like I said, that's the problem with America today. And if, until we get our heads screwed on straight, we're going to have to continue to fight that battle. Nope. You're absolutely on point and you're correct and accurate. Um, that, that first call was a good representation of uh, the Democrat Party and what they've been able to you know, I, I I don't even, to glean from the American people, you know, I, I talking about Nancy Pelosi, I truly feel sorry for. The only word that comes to mind is pathetic. Um, and, you know, she doesn't need the gig. She can go home with her $50 million and hang out on her, her private wine preserve in California and just enjoy life for a little bit. Lee, you'd do that, wouldn't you? I mean, if you had $50 million in a vineyard in uh, sunny California, wouldn't you just go back and pop your feet up and forget about it? You'd never see me again. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'd get an email. Hey, hey, it's Lee living the dream. Uh, I think Nancy Pelosi needs to do that, quite honestly. Um, but really, do you think people were concerned about the government shutdown? I mean, seriously, I, 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 I don't, I don't think they, number one, I don't think they understand it fully because it's so convoluted. And number two, I mean, I, I just gave you a list. I mean, how many times has the government been shut down since what? 76. Yeah. Under Gerald Ford shut down for 11 days. Jimmy Carter shut down for 12 days. Another time with Jimmy, Jimmy Carter, shut down for eight days. Another time with Jimmy Carter, eight days. Another time with Jimmy Carter, 18 days. Oh, he was a Democrat, wasn't he? Yeah, okay. Uh, another time with Jimmy Carter, 11 days. And then Reagan, uh, Reagan shut down for two days, one day, three days, three days, two days, one day, uh, one day, and uh, another one day. Uh, President George H.W. Bush, H.W. Uh, Bush, three days. Uh, Bill Clinton shut it down for five days. Uh, Bill Clinton again, 21 days. Um, President Barack Obama, 16 days. Uh, so government shutdowns, forgive me if uh, <clears throat> I don't react as though having just been struck by lightning. 
All right. Happens all the time. It's just their little political game of trying to get, uh, you know, he said, she said, tug of war. That's what it is. They might as well just put a big knotted rope down there on the floor and have a tug of war. That, that makes sense. I'd like to see that. That would be entertaining. You know, what they're doing now is just uh, boring. Doesn't make any sense. And it's a waste of our tax dollars going up there to uh, to their paychecks. You know, this is not what we bought in for. We didn't buy into this. All right. Uh, your call straight ahead, 1-800. Oh, I got something for you. I, I need to do this. Because my my daughter's oldest child, um, I'm not going to give her name, but uh, she had her first daddy-daughter dance, right? Then, And she's also my first grandchild. But um, she's like four, I think, now. Uh, she had her first uh, daddy daughter dance. And it was so funny, you know, to see my son-in-law outside of his police uniform. And he's actually had a tie on, which was kind of a big deal. Um, taking my, uh, my little uh, granddaughter on her first daddy daughter dance, not so in New York. And I'll tell you why, when we come back, I'm Rick Roberts, two fifty seven. the time stick around, Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom, very latest uh, breaking news. And we'll check that afternoon drive for you as well. If you don't think this country is going to hell in a handbasket, wait till this next story. You won't believe it. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, 3.05 the time. I, I don't know why I should expect anything any different. Um, based on what goes on uh, in the nation's so-called capital. I don't know why I should expect anything different when it comes to the school system, which is obviously run by the federal government. Um, do you ever take your daughter to a da daddy-daughter dance at the usually elementary school? Have you ever done that? Or... Did your dad take you to one of those dances? Well, I took my daughter to him. Uh, and I don't remember. She was like in first or second grade or something. But it was a chance for her to get dressed up and, you know, all that kind of. But, you know, I, I thought about it and I thought, you know, raising a boy was one thing. I mean, he was a big jock, so it was, you know, relatively easy. Except to get him an education because the coaches always made sure, you know, he was passed through so he could play on Friday night. But my daughter was different. Very academic. And it's it's odd how you have two kids in the same household uh and they are they are as different as night and day. My daughter was very academic. So when she was really, really little, I mean I'm talking, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old, uh, once a month it was uh, our night out, and I, I had selfish reasons for it. I, you know, I when she started dating, which I knew that day would come, I wanted to make sure there was some place familiar to her other than Taco Bell um, that her dates would take her to. So, you know, once a month, she'd get dressed up, and you know, she'd do her hair, and well, you know how little girls are five, six, seven, eight years old. And get her shoes, and here we go. And, you know, I'd uh, basically leave on my shirt and tie and jacket from work. And we'd go to a nice restaurant. You know, something uh, something that you wouldn't normally go to. You know, where, you know, you, it's like, you know, the first time we went, what's all this silverware? Well, this over here on the left, this is for a salad, and this is for the entree, and this, you know, that kind of thing. And have waiters you know, wait on her. It, it, it was just, you know, it was fun. Plus, like I said, it made her familiar with more than just the drive through at Taco Bell. So when she started dating, um, yeah, that's okay once in a while, but every once in a while, I want to go someplace else. So in any case, that's what I thought of when this came up. 
uh, the daddy daughter dance is, it was just kind of a, you know, tradition in elementary school. Well, a New York City school canceled the father daughter dance because of concerns. And by the way, this is the Fort Worth Independent School District uh, superintendent. What's his name? I forget. Um, is he listening? He's got to be loving this. They canceled the father daughter dance set for Friday because of concerns it might violate a district inclusion policy, keyword being inclusion. The PTA for PS65 on Staten Island abruptly called off the event after realizing the dance might run afoul of a City Department of Education regulation requiring gender-neutral events unless there's a specific educational purpose. So, see, well, let me go on. City school officials said the event would replace the dance with another one next month, but something that's gender inclusive. Well, I'm sorry. What are you talking? Some parents, uh, they thought it was because of political correctness gone too far. Of course it is. One parent said, I think it's dumb. Um, I guess politicians have nothing better to do than politicize everyday life. Another parent said he was surprised to hear about the cancellation. One student said her classmates, we already, and these are just little tiny girls. We have already bought our dresses and our shoes um, in advance of the dance. Um, I guess a former Republican mayoral, can, a mayoral candidate said uh, uh, city councilwoman Nicole, and I can't pronounce her last name, said in a letter to schools, um, the policy has likened it to a ban of every semblance of tradition. Rather than robbing every student of the opportunity to create a lifelong memory, the school system should instead focus on establish, uh, establishing accommodations uh, for transgender students who want to attend the function. How about this? I, I know this is a radical idea. How about schools just get down to educating? You know, leave the rest of the stuff to us. Rick, but what happens if one shot? Well, first of all, it's pretty stupid. Uh, you've got a daddy-daughter dance, and you cancel it because there may be, might be, we don't know for sure, a transgender student that feels excluded. You know, my daughter sent me pictures of um, my granddaughter. Like I said, I think she's four or five. She goes to, like, pre-K, and and she was all dressed up. She had a little, little corsage. I mean, it was all it was great. And my daughter reminded me through those texts remember when we went here remember when we went there remember this remember that uh, so those you know those were special moments for a little girl right with dad um as far as i'm concerned if i were a parent with a child in that school i would take my child out of that school i would do it uh private school uh, you know i recommend that anyway private school a voucher school, homeschool, do whatever you have to do. The public education system is in shambles. Um, you know, they're ripe for any knucklehead agenda that comes down the pipeline from the federal government, and all they are are giant social petri dishes. Um, and we're not educating very well either. Uh, you know, that's kind of the whole whole nine yards for school, isn't it? I mean, you tell me. Is this being, you know, I, I thought to myself, well, Rick, you know, use what intelligence God bless you with. Uh, what do you think? And I said, I think it's political correctness gone too far. And people actually argued with me. Well, Rick, what if you were a transgender and there was a daddy-daughter dance and you couldn't go? Well, if I'm a boy, there are other things throughout the year that I can be included in. Daddy-daughter dance is not one of them. Well, what if you feel like a girl? Uh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, unlike the Fort Worth Independent School District Superintendent, you know, I'm not looking for transgenders around every corner. I'm just not. Now, what bathroom are you going to today, uh, Mike? Well, I feel pr kind of pretty today, so I'm going to use the girls. Okay, you take care. Uh, it's nuts. I say it's political correctness run amok that will eventually ruin the country. I mean, it starts now with our kids, but um, these kids are going to grow up. So am I? if I'm wrong, if you think I'm wrong, that's fine. But I have to have more than, I think you're wrong. 
you got to have a basis for argument. And these people that were arguing with me, well, you've never been a transgender, so you don't know. Well, that's like saying I've never been a black person, so I don't know. No, I don't. I'm never going to know what it's like to be in, in the shoes of a, of a black guy my age. I mean, I can read and inform myself, but I'm never going to know personally what it's like or transgender either one. I, I Forgive me. I just don't think there are that many transgender out there that we need to start making, uh, you know, cancellations of things we've done historically to try and, you know, make the kid's life a little better. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, do you, do you, under, I mean, do you understand what you're saying? It's, it's, I don't think I'm being demonstrative about this. I think I'm being no, common not. sense. So, all right, we'll find out what you think. Uh, Rick is being too um, against these people because uh, of political correctness, or I think they have a point. You've got to be inclusive of all children. Lee, how do you feel today? You feel, uh, you find that feminine side of yourself? You know, you'll find this funny. I never feel pretty. You never feel never, pretty. Well, never. All right. 314 the time, 1 800 288 9227. 1 800 288 9227. 1 800 288 WBAP. Canceling the da- uh, daddy daughter dance in elementary school. Uh, because we may be excluding the transgender bunch. Am I uh, am I being too over the top saying this is absolutely insane? Um, if you're transgender, I don't know. It seems to me you could pretend to be something. I, I'm sick of the whole thing. It's political correctness uh, gone nuts. Uh, that's what it is. 1 800 288 WBAP, 1 800 288 9227. Your call straight ahead. You have to see my daughter's face every time that we walk in. It's just like, a, wow, you know, my dad is here, you know. And for us dads that we have the time, you know, I actually make time for it because I work at night. And it's, it's a pleasure. You know, I guess the reason this story, I mean, there are a lot of politically correct idiots out there. But... Um, you know, after after I finished a life in one job arena, um, I started working in radio, and you know, go I backed into it to be honest with you, um, and I started working evenings. Um, you know, I would uh, ski during the day and I'd work during the night, and I'd get home I don't know five thirty six o'clock in the morning, and I remember my daughter running up on Saturday mornings and jumping in my lap and we'd watch cartoons. Actually, I would sleep. She'd watch cartoons. Um, and then we had the, you know, the daddy's uh, daughter night out thing once a month. And the daddy daughter dance was a big deal, you know, because little kids, you know, they, they want to show off their new dress and their new shoes and, and, you know, they just have a good time, but we can't do that now, (laughs) evidently because, we may be excluding transgender kids, uh, even in elementary school. Uh, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. It truly is. Uh, let's go to Annie in Bedford. Annie, thank you for waiting. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Good. So I've been listening to this whole thing, and I, I read the article, and I think it's ridiculous, and I think there's a really easy way to solve it. And in Bedford, they solved it. Uh, we, they're actually having a father, daughter, mother, son dance tomorrow. So doesn't that include even transgendered kids? Because no matter what you identify as, bring a parent and party with us, right? So You know, you know I, I, I get that every year. I, I don't know how, how old your kids are, but every year um, uh, the graduating seniors on the football team, uh, they have a night. Uh, where the parents come down and, you know, the you give a rose to the mom, that kind of thing. You're, you're familiar sure. with that. Um, Absolutely. Well, uh, my kid's mom passed away when she was like 46 years old. So um, for that night, uh, my daughter wanted to do something else. And I said, no, we got to go to the game because he was graduating. So when my son, you know, they walk out on the field and they have a rose and they give it to their mom. And, and you know, it's kind of a recognition of the parents. Um, I walked down and my daughter walked down. So he gave the rose to my daughter. 
Um, I guess I could have made a federal case out of it and said, wait a minute, right. wait a minute, where, uh, what about the deceased mothers of these football players? Where's, right. uh, where's our, we don't want a rose, we want a fishing rod. I mean, you know, I could, right. I could have been, been an idiot about it, but you don't. You just, you know, you just make do and move forward. Well, it's totally unnecessary. And you're talking about these imaginary transgendered kids as if they're hiding behind every bush. And they're <laughs> just not. No. You know? like, it's just not as common and as, as prevalent as they're trying to make it look. It's like my son had the option to go to the dance or go to Star Wars. And much to my pleasure, he picked the dance because he's taking his mom out, you know. Well, look at him. Good he's job. quite the gentleman, but you know he we're we're uh, he's a child of divorce, and I'm remarried, and it's really rare that he and I get to have that time alone because he has a stepsister now, and and it's really special for us. And I, why should somebody else's child ruin that time for me just because you can't figure out what you are yet? Like, yeah, that's, you, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's ridiculous. Like, it shouldn't affect me and my family. You should sort out your your whole situation, and then if it's a boy, do boy stuff. If it's a girl, do girl stuff, or whatever, even opposite. Like, I was a huge tomboy, and I played sports with boys, but I never made a federal case out of it, you know? I, I went to my brother's Boy Scout meetings because they were much more interesting than the Girl Scout meetings, but I never tried to be an actual Boy Scout because I was a girl. So it doesn't, it shouldn't really matter. You know, it, it, they keep trying to force this crazy agenda on us when, uh, honestly, our kids could care less. You know, that's the point. The kids could care, uh, couldn't care less. Um, and, and all it does, it, you know, it, it satisfy a bunch of these, you know, politically correct numbskulls that, uh, think, well, they're, I, I'm doing something now to take care of the transgender. How many transgender kids are in first grade? How many, well, we don't know, but if there's just one, you know what? Forget it. Forget. Speaking of Girl Scouts, Annie, I got something for you. Girl Scouts may be kicking out one of their Girl Scout members to me. I think she ought to get some kind of special award. You know, they're selling cookies, right? Uh, she set up her little table and got her cookies. Um, she sold like 500 boxes in six hours. Uh, they're saying that she may have uh, raised $1,500. Where'd she set up her, her cookie stand? Outside of a marijuana dispensary. That's where. Good for her. Good for her. Everybody that walks out with their uh, uh, their smoke, hey, I'll take some of those thin mints. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, don't kick her out. Make her, make her leader of the pack. Oh. It's supposed to be father and daughter. Father and daughter need to um, have a little relationship. You know, feel good. Daddy taking you out on your first date. You get all dressed up. Yeah, well... Hold on there, sister. Don't know if we can be doing that. You know, get those transgender five-year-olds running around. We couldn't, uh, we don't want to upset them. Uh, personally, I think it's political correctness run amok um, and worming its way into society where it will be as devastating as a round from an AK-47. Uh, too strong? I don't think so. Um, yeah, they have decided cancel or at least reschedule for the moment the daddy daughter dance at one of the elementary schools because it may not be inclusive of transgender or gender confused kids you know this wasn't a problem until adults made it a problem then it became a problem do you see what i'm saying okay if you disagree with me, that's that's fine. Bob in Olympia. Bob, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Bob? Hey, Rick. I'm so glad to be able to get into you today. Uh, I started listening to your program on the Internet about a year ago. Thank you. Uh, and I really enjoy it. Um, so often you speak my mind, and uh, I've been wanting to call you and just uh, tell you how much I enjoy it. And where are you calling uh, from, Bob? <clears throat> well, it's a town just south of Olympia. It's called Rochester. Uh, Rochester, Washington. I know exactly where you are. I, I did a lot of work up at Bellingham and Port Angeles and all in that area. So uh, oh, good yeah. to have you. Good to have you. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I was calling today because uh, you had mentioned about the, the terrible state of 
public schools and <laughs> you know I, I i can't agree with you more my my wife is a school teacher uh she was teaching back in uh, back in the 80s uh, and our son was born, and we decided uh, after observing the uh, the difference <clears throat> that we saw in the lives of some friends of ours that were homeschooling their kids, uh, how different these kids were from from kids that were going through the public school systems. I mean, they were just head and shoulders above them. I mean, just in terms of scholastic ability, uh, politeness, uh, good manners, everything. It was just night and day difference. We decided, you know, that that's kind of what we'd like to uh, to see our children as well be well behaved and well educated. Well, long story short, my wife homeschooled our son. We we had one son. <clears throat> he uh, he graduated from high school through the homeschooling program uh, with a 3.9 average. Went to a uh, college that primarily is for kids that were homeschooled. It's back in Indianapolis. And he graduated from there, uh, magna cum laude, uh, and got hired by the school to be their financial uh, officer. I forget what the exact title was. Right. Uh, he he just did extremely well. But, you know, Rick, the one thing I think <clears throat> more than anything else that I think we got a benefit from homeschooling our son was my son has a bond with his mother. Like, you, I mean, it's unbelievable you know, you, you you just your children bond with the parent that's teaching them in a way that <clears throat> it just doesn't happen any other way. And he has a deep respect for the sacrifice that my wife made. She gave up her teaching job to home stay home and homeschool him. <clears throat> and only in the last four years or so, she went back to teaching. And she said, you know, <laughs> it's a it's a whole new world, even from back in the nineties. Uh the the whole education system is so um politically correct, so I mean it was bad back then, but it's even worse now. But, you know, she just plays by the rules, doesn't try to, you know, make too many waves except for when she feels that she can, but <clears throat> you know, it it's just really sad to see that all of these dollars, you know, I keep hearing about, well, we need more money for education. <laughs> you know what, Rick? The funny thing is, I think the entire, <clears throat> my son's entire education, K through 12, homeschooled education, I think we spent about roughly six, $7,000, okay, wow. over that course of time, six, $7,000. And I understand in our area, uh, I think the average student here is somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand per year, per year that they spend on a student here. And I mean, if I had ten to fifteen thousand dollars to spend on my son every year for his education, you know, he'd be ruling the world right now. Because, you, know, <laughs> you know what? It's it's and I have seen it firsthand. Homeschooled mm-hmm. kids, you're right, are head and shoulders above those in public education scholastically. Uh, generally, they're better mannered because they get disciplined when they need it. Um, you know, teacher, right. teachers can't discipline at all for fear of, uh, right. you know, the kid's attorney walking through the door. Uh, so I, I tell people, uh, you know, even if you have to take a second job, um, get your kids out. Get to a private school, a parochial school, a charter school, home school. Do whatever Absolutely. you can because the public education is uh, system, and I'm not talking down or bad about teachers, um, the public education system, those setting the the curriculum and everything else, it's just it's just a giant social petri dish, and That's it right. w- works for nobody's benefit. You're, you're absolutely right, and you know the funny thing is one quick story. My my friend who encouraged us to homeschool our son, he had eight children all together, and his oldest son, when he was twelve years old. His oldest son said, hey, Dad, I was looking at the schematic for our home, and I think I can wire our house for outdoor lighting. Would you mind if I do that? (laughs) His dad said, yeah, go for it. So he did, at 12 years old, his son did the entire outdoor lighting for their home. Today, this kid owns his own business. He's not a kid anymore. He's in his going into his 30s, but he he has his own business, very successful business. He's uh, he graduated. Uh, magna cum laude from a school down in California uh, from and got his PhD. I mean, he, he is amazing. So 
So there is definitely something to be said for homeschooling kids. Oh, there, there's no doubt. Bob, I appreciate the call from Olympia. Uh, don't be a stranger. Want to hear from you again. Uh, let's go to uh, what we're talking about, by the way. Um, is the daddy-daughter dance being canceled for fear of excluding a possible transgender or gender-confused child. This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Political correctness uh, knows no bounds. And you get a bunch of bureaucrats together, and they'll make it, uh, is, they'll make it worse tenfold. Uh, let's go to uh, Tony. Tony, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Tony? Hi, Rick. I'm fine. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks. Um, well, number one, I just want to say that I, I really love your show, and, and you sound a lot like my father-in-law, and we joke about it a lot. You guys have the same mannerisms. It's really funny. I talk about it all the time. But back to the point at hand here, you know, I just think that it's very disappointing that the school district is choosing to either cancel or reschedule this very special dance for a daughter and her father. You know, I have a five-year-old little girl, and next week they're having their first daddy-daughter dance. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I know. And, and, you know, they couldn't be more excited about it. And I just feel so sorry for these families, these, these kids that are being penalized, that aren't able to experience these things because the political correctness in our country has just gone off the deep end. And... You know, I totally agree with you about the public school system. I feel so fortunate that we were able to get our children into a charter school. Good, um, good. You know, it's much smaller. I mean, in, in, in lieu of the Olympics, you know, yesterday, it's a very diverse school. So, you know, they, they celebrated all the culture. So if you want to talk about inclusivity and, and everything like that, you know, it's just I feel really, really fortunate that my kids are not in this type of public school system where we're having to deal with all of this political correctness and having to make sure that we're not offending one person or the next because of all of this stuff that's just been force fed down our throat. And you're, you're absolutely right. And if I may say your kids are pretty lucky to have a mom that, uh, you know, cares that much and a dad, I'm, I'm sure. But you know, if, if you look at this, this is nothing more than political correctness run amok, just like at the Dallas or excuse me, Fort Worth independent school district. You know, this uh, this Einstein over there uh, that, you know, brought up the whole bathroom, you know, what bathroom should uh, little boys and little girls use? Uh, yeah. Leave it alone. Le- well, we can't leave it alone because we've got transgender students. And then, of course, the LBGTQ, ABCD, EFG group comes out uh, in lobbying for these transgender students that they don't even know about. Uh, they're just assuming. Uh, I just don't want to play that political correctness uh, tune in my head very long. It just, uh, you know, if you've got a situation you need to deal with, deal with that situation. Don't indict the entire population of the school. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I'm very empathetic to the LGBT community because I have friends that are gay and lesbian. And I, I'm i not, but I believe that there's a certain amount of respect that has to go along with that but in recent years you know where somebody gets penalized for not making a cake or this that or the other i've 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 almost lost interest in in it because it's just been too much it's just it's too much You, you know one of my best friends uh, was the uh, head district attorney for San Diego County and that's one of the largest DA's uh, DA offices in the country um, and I, I lobbied for her I campaigned for her uh, she's great um, I mean and you know I went to the rank and file the couple hundred deputy DAs in the trenches every day and said what do you want you want the incumbent the good old boy or what, you know do you want Bonnie and with to a person everybody said Bonnie Demanis. Um, and okay. she's lesbian. She and Leslie, I guess, have lived together, I don't know, umpteen years. Um, well, you know, that never was an issue. It never was yeah. because she didn't make it an issue. Uh, mm-hmm, exactly. It's not about cakes. It's not about canceling daddy-daughter dances. It's not about anything. And, you know, you're right. People deserve respect just because they're people. Um, right. So, well, good for you, Tony. I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. Like- for you, Rick. I, w- I have one question before before I let you go. Sure. You know, understanding the fact that the transgender community makes up a very small percentage of the population within the United States, so it's very unlikely that there's going to be a very large group of transgendered 
elementary school students wanting to come to this dance. Let's just say for instance, at this school district that's doing this, if there was one transgendered boy who identified as a girl, do you think that it would be a problem to just go ahead and let him attend with his with his dad? See, I, it depends on... Do you think that would be opening up the floodgates for something else? It depends on the family. It depends on the child. It dep- You don't indict the entire population of the school. Um, right. I, I would, you know, if, if he's a little boy... Um, and he's, you know, first of all, I don't know that a five, six, seven year old can make those type of decisions within oh, yeah. himself. So I would sure. say, well, this is, you know, for the girls and their dads, uh, let's, uh, right. let's get something together and go do it ourselves. I mean, I, I'm sorry when, when a lesbian or gay tells me, well, you know, I could tell, uh, that, that little boy right there, he's five, he's, he's going to be gay. You don't know right. that. True. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree completely. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. I was a bit nervous. I've never been on the radio before, but uh, I listen to you all the time. And I got to say that girl Jennifer yesterday (laughs) really had me heated and (laughs) you handled it very well, sir. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. And by the way, tell tell your father-in-law, Rick Roberts, said hello. He sounds like a cool guy. No, I'm kidding. 347 The Time. I'm Rick Roberts. News Talk 820 WBAP. WBAP. All right, 3.53 the time. Now, uh, the education department told uh, told the school, elementary school, to eliminate any gender-based activities. Yes, unless there's a, well, a clear educational purpose. Uh, the, how many other things are going on in public schools without a clear educational purpose? Uh, They said, citing the agency's transgender and gender nonconforming student guidelines. Okay, what's a, what, five-year-olds know about this, I guess? Um, Until we understand what we're legally permitted to do, we need to table this event. What's the event? It's the father-daughter dance. Kind of a big deal to little kids. Yeah, we need to get rid of that. Until we can figure out what we're allowed to do and what we're not under the transgender and gender non-conforming student guidelines. Really? Are you serious? What? Oh, so pretty. Yeah, what? I feel pretty and witty and gay. Uh, and you I'm can't pretty. say gay. Any girl who's in me today. Oh, you charming. Yeah, you feel I'm charming. So charming. I got it. All right. 354 the time. Uh, tell you what, I got just enough time. I'm going to get to, if you've been patient enough to hang on, I, I'll get to your calls. Um, I talked to David Prince over at Eagle Gun Range yesterday about uh, this uh, Richardson officer that was killed in the line of duty. And uh, it doesn't surprise me what David did. He, uh, he you know, um, he started a, a fundraiser. It's a raffle, and it's pretty nice. Um I uh, heard from him today. He said, uh, man, you've got great people in your audience. Um, within 15 to 30 minutes of the interview we did on WBAP, we had a retired officer stop by the Louisville store, donated $50. A Louisville caller heard the interview, donated $200 over the phone. Um, here at the store itself, a good customer walked in, wrote a check for 200 Another caller gave $50 over the phone. Uh, you have a wonderful uh, audience, uh, great listeners, and we haven't even sent anything out yet. All of this was a result of uh, uh, talking on WBAP, and we're going to be talking with uh, uh, David again, I hope. So I want to, I want to get the details on this before the end of the show. So David, if you could uh, ask David, uh, David, ask David if he can come back on, kind of give us an update of the fundraiser. Uh, right after the bottom of the hour, if uh, if we could do that. All right. All right. We'll uh, step aside very quickly. Eric Bushman standing by in the WBAP newsroom. Very latest breaking news. And uh, you know what? If uh, your school is canceling your daddy-daughter dance, um, find another school. Find another school. They're too politically correct for you. All right. 
uh, and your child. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk, 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk, 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. <laughs> okay, four oh five the time. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, this is what the bureaucrats in New York are saying. Rather than robbing every student of the opportunity to create a lifelong memory, the school system should instead. Focus on establishing accommodations should transgender students, we're talking about five, six, seven-year-olds here, wish to attend a function. Well, the City Department of Education uh, put out a statement that the PTA of 65, I guess, people will be holding a dolphin dance. It's a dolphin dance. You know that, right? A dolphin dance on March 2nd the dolphin is the school's mascot, and in accordance with the Department of Education policy, the dolphin dance will be inclusive of the entire community. Well, that so, sort of does away with the whole purpose of daddy-daughter dan- uh, dance, doesn't it? I mean, it was set up for a reason. It was set up for dads and their daughters to come in, and, and well, we can't have that now, Rick. That was from eons ago. Now we have to include everybody, even the panhandler out in the median in front of the school. Uh, we've got to have, we're going to call it the human being dance. That's what we'll call it. All right. That way everybody gets to attend. Um, man, uh, Sam and Forney. Sam, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Hey, um, I've called you about four times. This is the fifth. But, uh. The whole transgender thing, if you want to get rid of it, all you have to do is uh, get these people who are thinking that they're transgender and then lead them away from that lifestyle. If you want, if you want to be uh, transgender, then most likely you're going to grow out of it if people tell you what's right and wrong. Well, Sam, that's the point. That's the if you're five, six, seven, eight years old, you don't know what you are. You wake up in a new world every day. You know, you, you're just ba- barely housebroken at that age. You know, so for well, yes, uh, you know, I'm a member of the LGBT ABCDEFG neighborhood, and we uh, we believe this uh, five year old is transgender. You don't know. Like I said, let them be kids for crying out loud. You know, they were doing okay until adults got involved. Let them be kids, have their childhood. Uh, You know, you don't know at six years old, well, you know, Mom, you know, Dad, I've thought about this quite a... I I sat down and went over this after watching Bubble bubble Guppies, and, uh, you know, I I think I'm pretty certain... Well, let me just... uh, Are you sitting down, Mom, Dad? I'm transgender. That's right. I knew from the moment I turned the Bubble Guppy uh, show on today, I knew that I was transgender. No, they don't know that. So why are we trying to screw them up even further? All right. Uh, Sam, thanks for the call. Let's go to Claude in Dallas. Claude, thanks for waiting. How you doing? Oh, well, how you doing, sir? Good. Good. Thank you for taking my call. Um, so this is the first time I'm on the radio. Hopefully I do this right. My question is, Regardless of the transgender aspect of this, what about a student who may have lost their parent? Um, say if a daughter's father was a police officer in the military and he was tragically killed, that student would be eliminated for, some, for such dances. Shouldn't the school be more inclusive, at least in that regard as well? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know how they would handle that. I guess a daddy-daughter dance. Um, you know, it'd be tragic and horrible, but, uh, you know, either she would go with an uncle or a member of extended family or they'd do something else. I mean, 
you know, we're not talking about the end of the world here. We're talking about life is not fair sometimes, and you have to adjust and keep moving forward. Okay, so you, so far, I just want to make sure I understand your position that we should exclude that child that may have lost a parent. No, okay. I, I said, I didn't say that. I said they could go with, I mean, she can't go with her dad, right? She could go I mean, with, she, she could go with an uncle. She could go, she could go with somebody uh, else. Okay, so she could, she could go with her mother then, right? Would that be acceptable? Sure, if they want to do that. So what, so what's the difference of it being all inclusive? Well, it's, it's nonsense to try and tell me, convi- you, you would never convince me that a five, six, seven-year-old um, is uh, is absolutely, without uh, exception, uh, transgender or non-conforming gender, whatever those guidelines are. You're just not going to convince me of that. And you certainly, and I, that, you certainly I'm should. Trying to. You it's certainly about that, that that situation. Okay, it's here's the, the policy, deal. Right? Would would you shut down the dance because of that? I'm saying in in the, in the end result, if you're allowing parents of both sexes to take a child of both sexes to that dance, then how is it any different than being all inclusive? Well, first of all, I I don't believe you shut anything down because you're being gender exclusive uh, to saying daddies and daughters. Uh, That's just the way it is. If you don't have a daddy and some kids don't, uh, you know, I just gave you the example uh, graduating seniors on the football team, usually they pick one game toward the end of the season and they honor their moms and they, you know, bring them down on the field. And, you know, the, each kid individually brings a single rose, gives it to his mom, blah, blah, blah. Uh, my kid's mom died when she was about 46 years old. So when my son graduated, you know, he still did the same thing. I just walked down there with my daughter and he gave the rose to my daughter. I mean, there's always, but they didn't change the entire function based on the fact that my son didn't have his mom anymore. I I mean, you can take things to a ridiculous extreme. It's a daddy daughter dance. So that's what you do. If a a little kid doesn't have a daddy, he wants to go with mom and mom wants to do it. Sure. That's okay. Uh, but just tell me that you're going to cancel everything because you may be uh, gender exclusive or upsetting transgender kids That's nuts. That doesn't make sense. Uh, Basically, what they're saying, if little boys feel like little girls and they want to go to the dance, they should be allowed to do it, according to the Department of Education in New York. But then again, it is New York, right? If there's a situation that's going to make a child uncomfortable, feel left out, sad because they can't attend, that's not what we want. Uh, Okay, what do you want? Being uncomfortable is part of growing up. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't. I don't buy into this. You know. Well, can't we all get along? Uh, nine times out of ten, things work out. But well, if you know, if, if a child is uncomfortable, we we don't want that. What did we do in years past? The daddy daughter dance. How many kids were home sobbing into their pillows? How many little boys? were uh, sitting in their closet in the fetal position uh, because they weren't girls and they didn't get to go to the daddy-daughter dance. Did, did you do that, Lee? I, I don't think you did, did you? I still do it. Oh, you still? Yeah, you it still scarred me it. for life. It scarred you for life. Well, well we don't want that. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, these bunch of psychobabble ex- experts probably got together to, I, I guess, counsel the... Uh, New York Department of Education. Well, you know, little boys can feel like little girls, and if you exclude them, they could, well, they'd be like Lee. They'd be scarred for life, and we don't want that. Uh, Let's go to Monica in Fort Worth. Monica, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Monica? Oh, there she is. Sorry, Monica. My bad. Go Uh, ahead. (laughs) Hi, I'm I'm doing great. I met you at the stock show. Oh, did you? Yes, you were on the radio. Well, when I'm on the radio, sometimes I get tunnel vision. Well, how are you doing, Monica? I'm doing great. Um, I just wanted to call. I caught the tail end as I got in to uh, leave from work today, right. um, what the conversation was about. And um, I'm a substitute teacher, and um, I've, you know, been out of uh, 
out of the loop as far as uh, going to elementary school for a long time. I'm, you know, a grandma, and but I'm subbing now, and I love it. But I did want to let you know that um, in elementary schools now in Texas, we only teach English language arts and math okay. because that's what's on the STAR test. And um, when I went to school, we also did social studies and science and art and music, although they do music, but they do it like once or twice a week. They have computers once or twice a week, and they'll have PE once or twice a week. Sure. But the core, the core focus uh, of their, um, you know, education now is English language arts and math because they're having to teach these kids to take the STAR test, which, in my opinion, has eliminated all of the, you know, a well-rounded education. Well, what what they've done, they're teaching to a test instead of educating kids. Right. So, I, I mean, I, you know, I get that. I, I kind of understand that. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't understand why they think they need to socialize children. Uh, that, to me, makes no sense. Right. And th- now I homeschooled all four of my kids, and from kindergarten through graduation. And I'm also a certified teacher. And we learned every subject in every grade level. We didn't just focus on two, you know, subjects and until we got to junior did, high did, school. Did and you have a daddy-daughter dance anytime? Actually, yes. Um, through our church, my husband got to go three times to a daddy-daughter dance. Well, they're canceling, they're canceling at New York uh, because uh, it may violate their transgender or gender, un, unidentified gender problem. Um, you know, if there's a five, six, or seven-year-old uh, little boy that believes he's a little girl, he may be offended. Therefore, they've decided to cancel the whole thing. You know, every small child at one time or another wishes they were the opposite sex, but that's a temporary thing. Well, it's not if you're it's not if you're the you know the the ridiculous peripheral of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual questioning group. I mean, they want them as young as they can get them because it further validates their lifestyle. Um, and you know, I've got nothing against gays and lesbians until this kind of crap starts. You know, then, then then it's like, okay, you need to back off and at least let them get to be seven years old before you brand them as gay or lesbian or transgender or tricycle or whatever it is. Um, of course, that's just me. Uh, I'm glad uh, you called, Monica, and uh, thank you so much. I'll look forward to the next call. Uh, let's go to Doug in Arlington. Doug, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Doug? Pretty good, sir. Thank you very much for taking my call. You bet. Um, I just... Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? I got you fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. Um, so I am uh, very upset to hear that uh, something like this could be happening, to be honest with you. I've got a four-year-old, and uh, you know, I've been blessed uh, with a four-year-old little girl, and I can't wait for the daddy-daughter dance. And, and if I was in a place run by such whack jobs that would allow – the alphabet soup community, which in my opinion is a mentally ill community to run anything of the majority is ridiculous. And I I completely agree with you. I remember the daddy daughter dance when I, you know, uh, as I'm growing up and there were people who, who, you know, would, I would hear that would take their mom or their, or their uncle or whatever, because yeah, so I completely agree with you. There's always a workaround, and you don't gotta, you don't gotta keep it, keep everybody else from it. No, you don't. You don't have but, to ruin the entire event on uh, on one or two or three kids. You just simply work around it. And if you take political correctness out of it, there's always a way that things can be worked out. But evidently, we're not smart enough in the 21st century to figure that out. Right, but I, I just can't believe that there. They're letting a such a minority group of people who, in my opinion, are, I mean, you know, it's my opinion, mentally ill, 
to, to allow a four or five, six year old to think that they're a different sex. If, if you're raising your kid that way, you probably shouldn't have a kid. Yeah, I, I would not argue with that. And by the way, um, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old kid, like I said, they wake up in a new world every day. Uh, so I don't put this on them. I put this on this, uh, on the, this politically correct Department of Education and, and whatever it is that they're trying to dream up. I mean, kids uh, will run into enough obstacles as it is. And generally they're small thing. Well, he doesn't like me anymore. She doesn't like me anymore. That teacher hates me or, you know, I can't color her inside the lines or whatever it is. I mean, those are big deals to kids. You know, the last thing you need to do is have a group of adults trying to put forth their narrative or their agenda on the backs of little kids. You know, that doesn't make sense. As a matter of fact, it should be a crime. 425 the time. Your call's next. All right, 433 the time. A month or so ago, uh, I don't do a lot of remotes, but a month or so ago, I went out to uh, Eagle Gun Range, uh, got a chance to meet the owner, uh, David Prince, great guy, and his wife. And um, yesterday, we uh, committed most of the show to the fallen Richardson police officer, Mr. Um, uh, Sherrard, David Sherrard. And I talked to David yesterday because he decided, you know, in some small way he wanted to make a difference and give people the opportunity to reach out in some tangible fashion. Of course, uh, the officer um, left a wife and two teenage daughters. Um, David is with me once again because uh, he he put together this raffle. I want him to tell you what it is because it's an amazing uh, prize. And also, uh, if you just want to donate, you can do that too. So, uh, David, how are you? Great, Rick. How are you? Thanks for calling again. I'm doing good. David Prince from uh, Eagle Gun Range. And yeah, he's not calling me. I, I decided to call him and see what was going on. Uh, listeners came through for you a little bit, huh? Oh, your listeners were phenomenal. I tell you what, within probably 10 minutes of hanging up after the interview, we had a police officer, a retired police officer, drive by our Louisville location, walk in and say, I just heard it on the radio. I mean, we're within 10 minutes. Uh, within five more minutes, another lady walks in. They, you know, One was $50 just donation. They didn't want to be a part of the raffle. Another one was a $100 donation. And that happened at our Midway location as well. We're about 505, you know, pe- two people walked in and said, look, I just want to give money. We don't, I don't care about the raffle. Just oh, want to help. That's and great. then in the meantime, I mean, we hadn't even done anything on ourselves. This was all from your listeners. So by the, that evening, we would had close to you know, a thousand dollars raised, and as of today, we've raised two thousand dollars, and uh, looking for a, 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 a hopefully to be able to assist the family with a lot more. We're giving away a, an AR-15 type. It's called a Scar. Uh, it's a really nice rifle, and, and then my distributor, one of the people that we buy most of ammo and guns from, uh, heard about what I was doing and gave us an FN pistol to <laughs> auction off as well. So. It's just uh, people. People appreciate the blue. They so. do, and and they should, and they, you know, I've I've always been of, and that's why I was brought up. Uh, you treat police officers with the same love, support, and respect that you do your own family, uh, because Amen. they could at some point, uh, God forbid, but they could uh, have to stand between you and somebody that uh, wants to take your life. So that's the way you always treat them. But you uh, yes, now these raffle tickets are 10 bucks a piece, uh, great prizes, or you can just donate if you want. Tell people uh, where Eagle, and by the way, I've been out there. If, if you like to shoot, this is, <laughs> this is a place to go, the Eagle gun range. Tell them uh, the two locations, David. We have one in Louisville at uh, 491 West Valley Ridge, just north of Main Street off of 35 in Louisville. And then we just opened up a second store down here at um, Midway and Beltline and, and Farmer's Branch. And it's at 14400 Midway. We've got great customers, but it's obvious that you've got great listeners, too. Because it's, <laughs> well, I was just, I was really amazed at how fast they came in. But we just, you know, we raised some money for the D- Dallas officers and uh, right. we raised a considerable amount for them. And, we're looking to raise a, a considerable amount for this family because, I mean, they get help from some places, but, man, that, this is devastating. And 
I know we've got employees that are giving because they can't they can't win anything. They can't win the prize, but they're just giving because they love the blue. So uh, I'm I, excited they're here. It never ceases to amaze me what uh, what the listeners will do. Um, you don't even have to tell them. You just have to tell them there's a need. Um, you got two girls uh, without a dad now, and you got a yes, wife uh, that'll be going to bed and getting up by herself um, with the memory of her husband who helped so many people. People that uh, you didn't even know. So if you'd like to, I can tell you, I've seen it. As a matter of fact, tell them about your website because they can see everything on there. Yes, sir. Uh, www.eaglegunrangetx.com. If you'll go there, there's the the whole information about the raffle. Um, We've taken calls over the phone. We'd rather not because it's just getting the credit cards that way. But you stop by, you come by either donations and uh, we'll fill out the raffle tickets and, and um, put them in there. In one month, we're going to be trying to raise money for an entire month, and hopefully, can raise you know, several thousands of dollars. And then, we'll, in uh, April, we'll uh, or March rather, we'll have a drawing and provide the uh, winners with a beautiful AR five hundred uh, five five six and a uh, HN pistol. And, uh, well, thanks to that uh, to yeah. that that uh, that uh, gun provider. That that's pretty cool too. No, that, it was very good of him. I mean, it was free. For, he just gave it to us. Um, wow. So we're and I, I imagine there'll be other vendors trying to add to it as well. We just people uh, there's such negative press in the national news today, and there are a lot of people that love the blue and they stand in the, in the gap between us and. A very bad society of a lot of bad people, and they will volunteer to stand in that gap for us. And every single every single time, it's a you know. I, yesterday we spent uh, I think we spent all three hours talking about this uh, this fallen officer, and um, you just don't understand how some people perceive the world. But um, my thanks for uh, the kudos to the listeners because I. You know, we started the Warrior Foundation out in San Diego this very same way. Um, it just, you know, wasn't pre-planned, wasn't uh, something we produced. It just, uh, like you, you, you saw a need, and let's see if we can help out. And uh, the listeners came through, and I appreciate that very, very much. David, it's always a pleasure. I'm going to be touching base with you for the month to make sure that uh, everything's going okay. Is that all right? I'd be honored to have your phone call anytime. All right. David Prince, owner of Eagle Gun Range in Louisville and now in Farmer's Branch as well. Um, go to his website. You'll see uh, what they're raffling off there. And if you just want to make a donation, uh, know that 100% um, of everything that is donated uh, through the raffle or just individually, 100%, not a penny's going anywhere but the family. Um, that's, uh, that's the way it ought to be. So, well, if I if I haven't said it, and I probably haven't, thank you for what you've done so far. And I'm speaking to the listeners. Um, you know, many times, and I've seen it time and time and time again. Uh, all we have to do is let you know there's a need, and you pick up the ball and take it from there. So, thank you very very much. I'll be checking in with David Prince, owner of Eagle Gun Range, from time to time. And, uh, you know, see if there's anything else we can do. So, David, thank you. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, let me uh, let me do this. Let me get to a call or two before we go check that afternoon drive, all right? All right. Do you, you tell David thank you? Okay, good. Uh, let's go to uh, Jane in Arlington. Jane, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Jane? Oh, fine, thank you. Uh, I don't think kids that age know what they want to be or what they are. When I was young, I wanted to be a boy. And I wore blue jeans because boys had more fun. I wore blue jeans and cowboy boots. For my mother to get me in a dress was like pulling teeth. The first day of fifth grade, the cutest boy I'd ever seen in my entire life came to our school. And guess what? I went home that night after school. I told my mom, I said, can you sew me some girls' clothes? And she said, what happened? And I says, I think I've got a boyfriend. And she, she sat there that night and sewed me a skirt and a blouse. And the next day, from then on, boop, wanted to be a girl. Yeah, that's that's an, another thing, Jane. I mean, with all these psychobabble experts, I, as you can tell, I don't hold uh, the psychiatrist, psych, psych, psychotherapist, 
uh, the you know I, I don't hold them in high regard because I've seen the other side of that and um, you know these psychobabble experts they get with people that have an agenda or a narrative they want to put forth and you know they're they're putting us on five six seven eight year old kids that's 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 a crime man let them be kids that's what I think too uh, they it's the parents that are telling them too oh well you know maybe you want to be a girl well you know. Like I say, it was like pulling teeth to get a dress on me until that boy came to school. And, oh, man, I just <laughs> I fell I fell in love. And you know what? We were boyfriend and girlfriend till the 10th grade. Is that right? Oh, yep. wow. Yep. That's a yep, Jane. Sure will. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's very cool, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's a, I'm a big believer in letting kids be kids. I mean, discipline so they don't hurt themselves or others, obviously. Um, but just because, you know, you're a screwed up adult, don't make your kids screwed up. I, you know, that's always bothered me too. You know, you can be, you know, the biggest emotional mess in the world and spit kids out like a Pez dispenser. Nobody says anything because it's your right. Uh, but these are elementary school kids. Let them be kids. You know, they'll figure out who they are at some point. You know, maybe that won't help the LGBT double XYZ crowd. Uh, well, look, we can tell these kids, uh, these five, six, seven year olds, we can tell they're transgender. Therefore, that only validates our narrative. I, I'm, I don't want to deal with that, and I'm not going to deal with it. Number one, I don't believe you. Okay. When they get a little older and figure things out, uh, yeah, then maybe you've got something to work with. But leave the leave the little kids alone. Let them be kids. Let them have daddy daughter dances. Uh, let them, uh, you know, let them do what they do on the playground. Well, I'm not too sure if that's not a sign of early aggressive behavior. Stop. Will you quit? Okay. I mean, when I was in school, we had monkey bars. We flipped up. We hit each other with dodgeballs. Remember tetherball and how you tried to hang your best friend all the time? And we're still here. We're Well, Rick, you know, you could have been a lot less aggressive when you were young. Really? Okay. Thank you, Frazier. Uh, 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Your calls straight ahead. That's good. I don't remember that. You, you just drop that in there? I like that. All right. Rick Roberts with you. This is the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show on News Talk 820 WBAP. I just got this in. Uh, I try to get through the emails during breaks. Uh, Rick, in our town, the daddy daughter dance is put on by either churches or another non government run business. It's a great thing and shows a young lady, all capitals, young lady, how she should be treated. Good Lord. That's Angie. Angie, I agree. hundred percent. hundred percent. Let's go to Cynthia. Cynthia, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Cynthia? I'm great. How are you, Rick? I'm good. Thanks. I just want to let you know that you wonder sometimes why we have snowflakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, this is we're teaching these little ones to be snowflakes. That's all I can tell you. Well, and the parents of those who think that they're offended by this father daughter dance. Yeah, I, I think you're probably. I mean, we've got we've got our fill of uh, you know the snowflake generation um, or the cupcake generation, whatever you prefer. Um, but the liberals are working tirelessly to make sure we don't run out of snowflakes, aren't they? Well, they really are. And just to be on a little bit serious note is that, you know, you really looked a little deeper onto why these mandates go down. Well, it really wasn't a mandate to go down. And you have to stop and think that most of these snowflakes are probably working in these departments. They that's, really you are. know what? That's probably true. That's probably true to a certain extent. Yeah, the, you know, the curriculum, you know, I, I go back to, to outcome-based education with my daughter uh, and it drove me nuts, and I voiced my concerns to the school um, all the way down to Common Core uh, a couple of years ago. 
And, you know, none of that's designed at the local level. It's all, it's all done at a, at a federal level. I've even got some people on tape I'll play for you one of these times, one of the authors of Common Core, and he starts off, well, I realized I needed to get involved uh, being born white with uh, extra privilege. I knew that I needed it. And at that point, the entire crowd just goes nuts. Um, oh. it, and they should. It was one of those town hall meetings they were trying to sell Common Core to. Look, just educate our kids, you know, and I don't mean to sound archaic, but reading, writing, and arithmetic, if you can pull that off, I'm fine. Amen. So, Cynthia, good call. I appreciate it very much. And she's right on point, isn't she? Uh, Brian, Brian in Fort Worth. Brian, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Brian? I am doing great, Rick. Thanks for having me on your show. You bet. Hey, um, I want to go at this from another end. Um, I work with a bunch of guys that you wouldn't think going to a dance is that big of a deal to them. Right. But, man, this event comes up every year and that. I tell you what, Brian, we've got uh, a really, I'm going to put Brian on hold, uh, see if you can get a better connection with him, let him finish. I didn't want to cut him off in mid-sentence, but uh, the the static was horrible. Um, Let's go to Pete. Pete, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Pete? Hey, you're very welcome, Rick. I I am so glad I discovered your show in the afternoon. I'm glad to have somebody who doesn't talk about himself so much. (laughs) Um, I just wanted to let you know, I came in on the middle of one of your conversations uh, about 20 minutes ago about the, the, the school dance thing and the gender specificity, and I just wanted to let you know that for the last 72 plus years, I have been practicing, and I continue to maintain gender consistency. Gender consistency. Well, that's, that's new. What, what is gender consistency? maintaining what I was born with. <laughs> okay, I'm right there with you. I figured, you know, I got stuck with this. I might as well make the best of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, uh, you know, I got to tell well, no, I'll, I'll tell you this tomorrow. It's too long a story. Um, you know, there's a difference between you and me, Pete. We're men, right? Uh, yes, in sir. women, there is a distinct difference. Instead of trying to erase the difference, we ought to be celebrating the difference. Uh, yes. I, I'm glad the, the world isn't populated by all men or all women, for that matter. Uh, yes, sir. I don't, I don't get why you're, well, we're exactly the same. No, we're not exactly the same. There are all kinds of differences, and that's okay. That's a good thing. And no matter how much surgery you had done, yeah. they're still the same. Still the same. Because, you know, the, 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 the males that have all the surgery, they can't have babies. That's right. I'm, just because you wrap something in a different paper doesn't make it anything other than what it is. Pete, good call. I appreciate it. 454 the time. God's blessings to each and every one of you, and I mean that sincerely. Whether you agree with me or not, that's always my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin, he's up next. I'll be back with you on Monday. 2 to 5, your afternoon drive, the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show on News Talk, 820 WBAP. We just figured that's how it was, and everybody else was just like us, soaking in the rain, baking in the sun. Don't quit till the job gets